What's going on, guys? It's Rob from Heroes Avenue. Hope you guys are all having a great weekend so far. Apologize for the delay in videos. Both Darren and I got sick, but we're back to talking DC news today. Mainly, we're talking about Wonder Woman 1984 and what Patty Jenkins has to say on various topics. And we are also talking about Aquaman's box office success and how it makes more history. And then we're going to get into reading the comments because you guys had great suggestions for a potential Wonder Woman 3. Let's get into this video. Okay guys, we are starting this video off by talking about Aquaman. Aquaman, of course, has hit milestone after milestone after premiering and now makes more DC history as it tops Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises. That movie made $1 billion, $80 million, and Aquaman is now the top grossing film in the DC universe. And of course, I'm not just talking about the DCEU, I'm talking about the DC universe as a whole. Um, Aquaman has surpassed that number and... Uh, it's it's pretty insane. You know, I know it's hit a ton of milestones and I probably shouldn't be surprised by now, but it still surprises me to this day. And James Wan had a similar type of reaction. He had a great reaction. Let me read it for you here on Twitter. It says, for years, Aquaman has been an orange suited orange shirted punchline no one is laughing anymore and this weekend when the king of Atlantis surpasses the dark Knight of Gotham City, orange will officially be the new black for Warner Brothers. And yes, of course, uh, I've talked about uh, in, in numerous videos how he was just a punchline, the butt of many jokes. And of course, no one is laughing anymore. And if they are laughing, they can laugh all they want because Aquaman is making boatloads of money. So who cares? And um, with this this uh, King of Atlantis surpassing the Dark Knight of Gotham City, who would have ever thought that uh, this character could surpass the golden child of the DC universe in Batman? But like he says at the end of this tweet, Orange will officially be the new black for Warner Brothers, and it is it is pretty crazy because now Warner Brothers is looking to make a sequel to Aquaman, and of course, uh, once this movie premiered, uh, everyone was wondering right off the bat, when is the sequel going to be made, and is James Wan going to be back to direct? Um, and uh, Deadline reports that he, uh, of course, uh, DC or Warner Brothers is trying to bring James Wan back, but first... He is taking a well-deserved break from directing, and before he decides he is going to direct an Aquaman 2, he first wants to see the script. Um, if you ask me, my guess is that there's no way at this point that he doesn't direct an Aquaman 2, not only because WB would be foolish not to pay him what he wants to give him enough incentive to continue, but also because he has dedicated so much of his time bringing Aquaman to life. Um, it is no small feat to do what uh, to bring what he has done what, what he has done to life in, in the manner that he has, um, given that there's no movie that has done something underwater to this scale before. Um, so uh, I, he is very invested in this movie, at least from what I see, and it would be really hard to leave it to another director to flesh out the universe that you created. That's at least my thinking. So he set the stage for more than one potential sequel uh, in this first outing of Aquaman. So there's so many places that James Wan could go from here. Of course, that post credit scene allows for Black Manta to come back for a potential sequel. And uh, I could totally see an Empire Strikes Back type of story for um, for uh, that character. And um, of course, Orm is still alive and well. So uh, and, and Aquaman has other villains that... Uh, that can potentially be shown on screen. So there's still a lot to explore, and that, and of course, the uh, the oceans. There is endless possibilities over there uh, in the ocean, given how vast and mysterious the underwater world is still to us. So um, really exciting to, uh, to to kind of speculate on that. So uh, of course, this news is all great news for us DC fans. And um, so I guess the question would be is to ask you guys. What storyline would you like to see adapted in an Aquaman sequel? So there's a lot of places to go from here, but given that in Aquaman, this first Aquaman movie, we got a little bit of the trench storyline. We, well, not really the, we got a lot of the trench uh, imagery, not really the storyline, but we got we got the trench mixed in there. We got Throne of Atlantis in there. We we got a little bit of the other storyline with Black Manta, but um, of course, I think they can go deeper into that. But um, there's there's plenty more to go by, and uh, I'm I'm wondering what you, where you guys want to see this franchise go from here. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Now let's go ahead and move on to Patty Jenkins. Of course, Patty Jenkins has been making some headlines now because she has done some interviews recently for both Variety and The Hollywood Reporter. And I definitely talked about some of what Patty Jenkins has been saying on my previous video, and we'll get to more of that later. But first, let's talk about Wonder Woman 1984 and how Patty Jenkins says she has her own No Man's Land scene in this movie. So I'm going to go ahead and quote her from Variety. 
I have a scene that's in this movie that is totally different, but it's my no man's land scene. It's like there's one scene that I'm so excited about and you have all those different things. It won't be the same scene, but there are some moments I'm really excited about. And of course, she is talking about no man, the no man's land scene, uh, the scene in which she uh, climbs up out of the trenches to face a barrage of bullets um, only for her, her male companions to follow behind her lead. And of, uh, that was the, probably the most iconic scene to me in the Wonder Woman movie. And I'm really glad there's going to be another scene like that. And, um, of course, uh, WB originally wanted to cut that scene out. So it's great that she has more creative control now. Looks like she's going to be able to create the movie that she wants. And uh, I'm really excited to see something like that. And, of course, you got to take into account that this movie is taking place in the 80s. So I'm wondering where the scene is going to take place. Is it going to be on the streets like, the streets, like some of the set photos and video that we've seen where she's running? Or will it take place in this mall um, in which we first saw Steve Trevor return um, in those photos? So uh, I'm really curious to see where uh, this is going to go. And um, I'm wondering if we're going to get a little bit of that scene in our first look at Wonder Woman 2. To be honest, I hope we don't get it spoiled in any of the trailers. Maybe just a glimpse of it, maybe an image, but I don't need to see it. It looked like we kind of got it played out in the Wonder Woman trailers. So I hope they don't do that with this movie. I hope we get it's a total surprise when we first see it. But um I, in my last video about Patty Jenkins, uh, she was talking about the 80s, uh, uh, shooting a film that takes place in the 80s, and uh, I referenced one of her quotes in my last video, but I want to give you guys the full quotes, so here it is. We're treating the era differently than I've seen so far, which I feel there have a lot of interesting versions of doing the era. In our version, as a child of the 80s myself, yes, there was funny, haha outfits I can't believe I wore, for sure, but there's also incredible music, incredible art. And so I really felt like the, the 1980s is mankind at their most extreme and at their best. It was when we could do anything and we, we could do anything we wanted and we had no idea of the price yet. So we have really committed to that version of the 80s where it's not needle drops, it's not a bunch of jokes, it's actually the most aspirational and elegant version of the 80s in many places. So I was really excited. Of course, the 80s, returning to the 80s and ha uh, having um, stories take place in the 80s is really a thing now. Um, of course, it's it's been done in, in, in several movies in the past few years. And uh, of course, who could who could, uh, you know, who could forget Stranger Things um, and other shows for sure have have been have been really relying on the nostalgia of the 80s to um, set their own worlds apart. So um, how Wonder Woman is going to do this uh, this is kind of how Patty Jenkins sees it. I really love the part where she talks about how the 1980s is mankind at their most extreme and their best and how they could do anything they wanted with no idea of the price. Of course, this is, uh, I guess she's referring to some of the things that are happening in today's world. So um, it sounds great. I'm really excited for that. Um, it is a shame that we have to wait until 2020 for this movie to release, but you better believe I will be there on opening night to see this movie. All right, that's not an, that's not the end of Patty Jenkins. So Patty Jenkins uh, did remark on a potential Justice League 2, and this is with the interview from THR, The Hollywood Reporter. I'm going to go ahead and quote her again. I find those movies to be extremely challenging. I think they're fantastic when they're well done, but taking on all of those characters at the same time and the timeline, I sort of hope that we don't do a Justice League movie for a little while because I think that each of those characters are really great. I'm super excited to see each of their movies. I want to see Aquaman 2. I want to see Flash. I don't know. I would never say never, but I think everyone should have a moment to shine right now. And that's Batty Jenkins on potentially directing a Justice League 2 movie. And I think this quote right here has a lot of people up in arms because uh, just because of the original plans for the DC Universe by Zack Snyder had originally five or six movies. So they some people think that, no, they can move with, forward with the Justice League 2 right now. But I honestly don't see anything wrong with these comments myself. I think given the situation we are in now where the critics are accepting Aquaman, they're, they're praising Aquaman, they're, they, they love Wonder Woman, and Shazam looks like it's going to do great. I think we're in a good position now to flesh out each character. Like she says, give them their... their their own moment to shine in their movies that way people can get invested in their own character their stories their side characters and that way when we bring them into a justice league 2 the people the fans uh, will be that much more invested uh, i know us who live in this comic book bubble in which we follow all this news we are, we are the minority we are people who follow this we're already invested in the characters but 
mainstream audience as a whole i think they need to become more invested uh through solo movies so i agree with her um whether or not she's going to direct a justice league 2 i'm not sure um if i had to guess it's probably not going to be her who directs it but hey i'm not opposed to her directing directing just league 2 as long as she has a good grasp on the source material and treats the characters well and um you know what she might she might be the one to do it uh my early guess is uh she's probably not i'm not sure if they're going to uh, tap into her James Wan or possibly a new director for the future but I think we got uh, we got some solid movies coming out now so I guess that's where the focus is um, of course she's already thinking about Wonder Woman 3 so let's go ahead and segue into that so um, last topic for today guys is um, is as um, me I'm gonna go ahead and read some of the comments but just to uh, tie this all in is in my last video I speculated on or I talked about how Patty Jenkins already has a plan for Wonder Woman 3 and just recently she talked about how it's going to be in a contemporary setting versus a period piece and uh, I just wanted to throw that in there here but um, you guys I asked you guys in my last video what scenario or what storyline would you like to see adapted in a Wonder Woman 3 and you guys had a lot to say let's so let's go ahead and get into reading the comments from my last video so it looks like some of you are some hardcore Wonder Woman fans out there. So I really went ahead and tried to find some of the comments that talk about uh, storylines you fans want to see adapted. So Kenneth Taylor says, I want Wonder Woman 3 to really lean into Greek mythology. I want to see Ares, Minotaurs, Griffins, and Medusa. Uh, the full title could be Wonder Woman Odyssey. And he had... He had several replies, but um, there's some people who totally agree with him and uh, are bumping this one up. So... Uh, it says right of uh, Vartok says right there with you fully lean into her background and heritage um, MGS big boss 77 says exactly Kenneth Taylor well said man God we've got the best fans here on Ears Avenue simply just gets it let's not forget about W uh, Wonder Woman's arch enemy circle as well and the likes of Felix Faust although he also lends himself to other DC superheroes the Flash Superman Captain Marvel slash Shazam Teen Titans and Justice League as one of their minor villains as well mind you um yeah so that sounds great i i am all for that as well you guys totally have some great ideas and to be honest i'm not uh i'm not well versed in the wonder woman i have read um i've read the entire new 52 just league and uh, a bunch of other comics with tie-ins with wonder woman so that's that's the, that's pretty much the extent i have for wonder woman uh my wonder woman knowledge so i'd really appreciate you guys um, shooting me some suggestions on what Wonder Woman stories to read. Some of you guys definitely talked about The Circle, so I'm definitely uh, pre-ordering, or I already ordered that one on Amazon. Um, so I'm waiting for that to get into that storyline, though I am somewhat familiar of it from um, seeing videos and having friends talk about it. So um, let's go ahead. Bruce Wayne the second says, Amazing video, very interesting to learn about the state of comic books. That sucks, man. Really want Shazam trailer extended. Wonder Woman 3, yes, first successful trilogy since The Dark Knight. Um, yeah, uh, the Shazam trailer, the extended one, I'm sure we'll get it soon. That teaser did it for me, though. I think I'm pretty sold on this movie uh, myself. But yes, definitely need this Wonder Woman 3 by Patty Jenkins. Uh, and uh, first successful trilogy. We might have a successful Aquaman trilogy as well. Who knows? But yeah, thanks for commenting in. Um, so Jose... Bracero says, Wonder Woman 3 has to be a story after the Justice League mess, and it should be her still working in Paris Museum, where she meets Circle, who love to change men into monsters, not just animals, and Dr. Psycho, who wants Diana uh, as his prized bride. Join forces. This is where Diana brings out her invisible jet, go back and forth to Themyscira. She brings uh, with her Donna Troy Wonder Girl. Wow, super specific. Um, yeah, so... Um, and there's a lot in this right here, uh, but that sounds that sounds great. I'm, I mean, um, let me ask you guys in the comments. Let me know. Would you want to see an invisible uh, jet? Do you think that could work on the big screen? Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, thanks for for uh, commenting in there. You know, I'm still again, like I said, I still have to read this Wonder Woman Circle storyline. I have it ordered. I'm ready to get into that. So yeah, that sounds cool. Uh, again, we have some real Wonder Woman fans out here. Tim Farrow says, Wonder Woman 3 needs to be in current times, post-Justice League, with new villains, someone like Genocide. Um, yeah, and as Patty Jenkins did say uh, just recently, she said that she wants her Wonder Woman 3 to be in current times. So you're at least going to get that uh, as to the villains. Who knows what we're going to get uh, so far, but I'm glad you guys have... Um you guys have some great ideas here. Rafael Fuentes says, I want Wonder Woman 3 to adapt the eyes of Gorgon. Uh, comic volume so freaking good how badass would it would a blind wonder woman be yeah that's that i'm not gonna lie it sounds so badass and again i haven't seen or i haven't read uh, this uh, storyline but 
Um, this has to be added to my list for sure. That sounds great. And last one here, let's go ahead and uh, check out MGS Big Boss 77 again. He was he's been uh, commenting on a bunch of people's recommendations for the Wonder Woman three. Uh, appreciate that. He's definitely passionate. So he says David F. Sandberg Shazam's tone similar to Ghostbusters 1984. Excellent. The film will be, will be fine then. This means it'll have a few scares, but at the same time, the tone will be. A heavy fantasy, just as Ghostbusters movie was in 1984, with the battle against a Sumerian god, Gozer. I mean, yes, the film was noted for the presence of the SNL actors slash comedians being in it, but tone-wise, it was a various, it was a serious fantasy movie with the right level of humor in it. Shazam, approached by Sandberg, will be no less example-wise then. I totally agree with you, MGS Big Boss seventy seven. I think uh, I think it would be I think it's totally great, and your and your you know explanation into why it would be great is totally spot on. It's gonna have uh, it's gonna have it's gonna have the feel of a serious fantasy fantasy movie with humor in it, and I think um, it would be the Shazam is the perfect. Uh, it would it would be great for Shazam to have that tone. So um, I'm not sure if a lot of you guys uh, in in our um, who are following us have seen Ghostbusters. I, I recommend it. I love Ghostbusters, but um, I totally think that uh, David F. Sandberg is on the right path here. Thanks for chiming in over there. All right, that is it for today, guys. Thank you for watching, and thank you for jumping into the comment section and joining in on the conversation. Sorry I couldn't get to all of you, but I really appreciate you guys jumping in into the conversation. Uh, please give this video a like if you can. Subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell for more videos. I will catch you guys next time. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,